After many years of faithful service, my trusty PC is beginning to show its age. If it collapsed in the middle of an edit, where would that leave you? Watching someone else on YouTube? I won't hear of it. So for your benefit, I'm building a new PC. You're welcome, you're welcome. The hardest part of building a PC nowadays is getting your hands on a graphics card. But why is this? Well, it's one of those rare situations where there are no causes, only effects. So you set up a stock notifier and you stare at it alongside 350,000 people and 650,000 bots for a few months and hammer the buy button blindly every chance you get. Eventually you'll get something in your basket and only then find out you're buying from a UK based site which no longer ships to Ireland. You feel momentarily enraged, but then relax as you remember this is a small price to pay for the British to finally be free of their brutal EU rulers. I got a graphics card in the end, but I had to pay this much for it. Why have I blurred it? Well, getting my hands on anything was a nightmare, so I just can't face the comments being full of, Owen, oh, you should have gotten a better card. Yeah, I should have, but I couldn't. That's why I have this card. And all I'm going to say about the three digit number on this piece of paper is it is far, far too close to being a four digit number. So I don't want to fucking hear it. For my CPU, I went with Intel. Ah, oh, and you shoulda gone with AMD. Again, shoulda, but I didn't. Eat my shites. My power supply, which comes with cables and free sweeties. Down the hatch. I don't have anything to say about my cooling fan because it's a fan. It spins, and I like that it looks like chocolates. Everyone I asked recommended a fractal design case because it wasn't their money being spent. Ah. You can get a version with clear side panels, but I'd rather hide my shame. The interior of some PCs look like Splatoon concerts, but as far as I know, nothing I bought lights up. Now before you get started, you're gonna wanna get something to keep any screws or small parts in so that they don't go rolling off. Also, you should be aware that every human body is constantly generating static electricity, which is usually harmless, but once you start building a PC, your brain goes into gamer mode, sending extra power to your fingertips. This raw gaming energy can damage your equipment, so you'll want an anti-static wristband. Now, some people say that this is a made-up concern to part fools from their money, but would a product like that show up in a bag that says posh in Comic Sans for no reason? Plus, it's got USA printed right here, so get that strapped to your ankle for kink purposes and to keep your motherboard safe. Once you've washed your hands, you're ready to get started. After you've hammered your CPU firmly into place, you'll want to connect the RAM. The nice thing about RAM is that you can put it into any slot you want, any direction you want, and it makes no difference. This is where the phrase, just ram it in anywhere, comes from. Now it's time to attach the cooling fan, which means we need to apply thermal paste to the CPU. But how much? To avoid people getting this wrong, they only provide the exact amount you need, so go ahead and use every drop you have, no more, no less. Then screw on your heatsink carefully so that you don't damage your motherboard. There we go, perfect. Now it's ready to go into the case. The main reason I went with the Define 7 case is that it has a slot for adding an optical drive, which is worryingly rare these days. I'll be transferring this disk drive from my old PC to my new one because I still have Incubus CDs to burn. To install it, you must first remove these screws. Remove these screws. Ah, fuck it, I'll do it tomorrow. <sighs> Good morning. Day two and looking forward to getting started. Ah! Christ, nothing is budging this screw. Fuck fractal design, fuck them. This video is not sponsored by the way. Maybe I just need a fisherman's friend, the strong menthol lozenge. Ah, there we go. Thank you, fisherman's friend. 
And thank you, Wrench from the Middle Isle in Lidl. Well, that's enough for today. Day three, so let's get that optical drive in there and an SSD while we're not busy. You're gonna want that for saving funny images you find online. Then you can look at them again in future with ease. Of course, you won't be saving anything without power, so start feeding the power cables into the case as elegantly as you can and start connecting everything up. And for goodness sake, check the manual to be certain you're putting the right cables into the right slots by making sure that the colors correspond to those shown on the chart. Let's see. VGA cable, black, SATA, blah, CPU, black, yeah, black. Time to get that graphics card in there. Let's take a look at it. Wow, bigger than I expected. At this size, it's a little awkward to get it into the case, but hey, it takes a lot of horsepower to browse the Steam store for games you're never going to play. Finally, you need to hook up your keyboard and mouse. Oh, oh, and you don't need to explain this part. We're not babies. Yeah, well, you'd be surprised how many people mess up at this stage of their build because they plug their keyboards into their mouse connectors and damage their computers in the process. Remember, have fun, but be vigilant. You'll need the Anubis setup disk to get your mouse working, which is simple enough, but guys, 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 do not click the middle button on your mouse. Left and right clicks only. The middle button will summon the ancient Egyptian god of death himself, and he will go straight for your CPU and family. We can now check to see if the damn thing actually works, so wash your hands and say a quick prayer to the one true god. You know the one I mean. Take a deep breath and... What did I tell you? Honestly, seeing that screen light up feels almost as good as when I managed to get that screw out. Wait, hang on. My graphics card has RGB lighting? I genuinely had no idea. I panic bought it so fast that I never noticed the feature. Makes me realize that anything I buy in future could have gamer lights I'm not prepared for. The easiest way to get Windows onto your system is to use a USB key. This foolproof method will have you playing Minesweeper and Space Cadet 3D Pinball in no time. And sure, while you're at it, you might as well throw in a couple of fans wherever you can fit them. The sound of the wind will keep your GPU calm while it's cranking out those crazy frame rates. And there we have it. A brand new PC twice as good as my old one, which I'll use to make videos half as good as my old ones. All that's left to do now is to place it onto the deep shag carpet under my desk. Next time on the Infinite Review, how to repair a broken VHS player that has a copy of Funny Girl trapped inside it.